Let's talk about beam width. Point source versus column array. If you've watched some of my column array review videos, specifically the turbo sound ones, um, the turbo sound ones were the first column arrays I bought, so obviously I'm going to have an opinion on those first. And one of my main complaints was that it just seemed like audio, I think I said, audio just goes everywhere. And the turbo sound ones were the only ones I've used. So I thought that issue maybe was specific to turbo sound and their implementation of a five-way crossover in their, in their column. But upon doing some further research, like I bought the RCF J8, J Mix 8 combo, and that seemed better. And, and maybe it just difference between a metal column versus a plastic column, maybe it doesn't resonate quite as much. I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. But um, over time, I, I still kind of had the same issues. You know, some people say they do live sound all the time and they don't get feedback. I would get feedback seemingly all the time. You know, I, I did acoustic shows with my RCFs and I was just fighting feedback with it. Um, I did live sound with the IP3000s and I was fighting feedback with it. Just more fighting of feedback than I ever would have with a point source. And, and that was definitely one of my issues. And when I, I, I sold my RCFs this week and I thought, you know, maybe, maybe what I need to get is the Evox 12 because, you know, if you watched my, my video about length of columns, you know, the Evox 12 has a much longer column. So I thought, well, maybe, maybe more, more throw with that and with a little bit better directivity. Um, you know, and even at Infocom, I was at Infocom a month ago, maybe a uh, month and a half. Uh, and I came across the, uh, HK audio element system. And with that, I mean, you can, you can stack three columns on top of each other. I mean, it's just, that system looks like it was designed to be what I'm looking for, but, uh, I'm not quite willing to drop, drop the cash on, uh, on an HK audio, uh, element system just, just to try it out. It's like $2,800 for like the base system. Plus I'd need to add two more columns. Plus I'd want to add an extension sub, but it's it's a scalable column array, which is kind of what I've been looking for. But after doing some of my research here about about beam width, um, I don't know if column arrays are for me. I think there just might be an inherent characteristic of column arrays that I do not like. For me, it doesn't work. For other people, it might. And and that, that's kind of what 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 I want to clear up with this video is. One of my issues with a column array might not be an issue for somebody else. So, but I, I want to. I like to point things out with technical de details so that people know exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm going to compare the RCF NX45 to the RCF Evox 12, and we're just going to talk about beam width. So I can give you an example of what I'm talking about because. With, with the turbo sound, I knew what I, I heard. Like, I, I can, I trust my ears. I know what I'm hearing, but it's hard to back up in a video saying, well, this is why I don't like it, I'm hearing this. And, you know, people can be like, well, you're hearing it wrong. But I, I wanted to back it up with some technical details. I'm not talking about the turbo sound. This is RCF NX45 versus the RCF uh, Evox 12. Uh, somewhat comparable in price, you know, I went with a higher end point source because it's the, the NX45 is an $1,800 uh, point source speaker, whereas the Evox 12 is a $2,500 column array. So it's a little more money, but it's, uh, the frequency response is very similar. The, the uh, Evox 12 will go down to 40 hertz, the NX45 will go down to, or the Evox 12 will go down to 40. Evo, or NX45 will go down to uh, 45 hertz. So very similar frequency response and kind of my point with doing these are both wood cabinets and you know kind of at the point of buying the NX45 you'd almost have enough money left over to maybe add on like a 15 inch sub to the system as well. Pretty close. So that's, that's kind of another thing I wanted to point out here. We're going with a high-end point source cabinet versus, you know, a high-end 
call them a rail, I'll say, because it's five grand for a pair of them. But at the end of the day, with the high-end point source, you still might have enough left over for a sub. But anyways, let's get down to the details here. I'll equip my battle in. So I've got the frequency, beam width versus frequency chart up here for the NX45. Now, the dotted line is the vertical beam width. I, I, I'm not too worried about that. We're not going to talk about ceiling and floor reflections in this video. This is more, why is it loud behind a column array? Now, if you look here, I, 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 hopefully you can see all this. You know, it goes up to, up to here, and here's 120 degrees in vertical coverage. For the most part, it stays below that, but it stays above 90. You know, it dips a hair b down below 90 around here, but really it stays below 120 up till about maybe 800-ish, which is about the point of where the compression driver and the the uh, the 15 crossover. It crosses over at 650, but obviously there's a little bit of overlap. So you can kind of start to see when the 15 takes over, the coverage pattern starts to get a little bit bigger because it's not horn loaded, it's not being directed forward. So you can see it start to shoot up, but it still stays under 150, dips down a bit, starts to go up to 180 around 300 hertz. But you know, that's 300 hertz at about 180. So 100 hertz, 2, 3, 180 degrees. You know, so we're talking to the side, but still we're not really throwing behind the speaker. You know, and it, it doesn't start to get, you know, you're down to 200, 150 ish maybe before you get to 210 degrees. So it takes a while for that, you know, omnidirectional dispersion to start to happen it gets it gets really low and a lot of times what I'll wind up with 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 microphones is I'll get like that 500 Hertz feedback which which seems to be kind of an issue and you know I notch it out and it gets rid of it but still you know it's there so now let's look at the Evox 12 so now you can see here obviously Actually, no, the Evox 12, I believe, only has a 90 degree coverage pattern, too. Like, that's what their stated coverage pattern is. I don't believe that one's wide. But, you know, down, down here, in the high-end frequency, it uh, actually becomes insanely directional in, in the high-end. I mean, we're talking 30, 30 degrees up around 10. Um, and it, it, it starts to... It, Really, I mean, you can you can tell the difference. It really starts to go up fast. I mean, we're we're up at uh, 90, 90 degrees at about uh, maybe five k, but we're already at one hundred and twenty. At uh, what would that be like twelve k, or no? I don't remember how it goes once you get above here for the lines. I wish they had them all. All numbered. I know. I know. Once you go under a thousand, it's a hundred per line. I'm not sure what it is up here though. But you know, at a thousand hertz, you know, we're already at about 230 degrees. So we're at a thousand hertz. We're really shooting it around. And I mean, at let's see, nine. Let's see, nine, eight, seven, six, five. At 500 hertz, we're at the full 360 degrees. And so that's that's just shooting it out everywhere. And that's exactly what I'm talking about with a column array, is that you, you get down there, not very far, and it seems like it's shooting everywhere. And I know I've, I've had people comment and say like, well, you know, you know, I don't know why you're getting feedback on stage. Uh, I never get feedback. You can notch out feedback. I'm not saying you can't. But obviously this is hard proof that you're shooting as much sound back on the stage at 500 hertz as you're shooting onto the crowd, which means it is loud on stage. You know, and I, I don't know how anybody else runs sound, but when I run sound for a band, I keep the speakers in front of the band and not behind them because, you know, there's a reason you don't put speakers behind the band. So 
you're not shooting sound into all the microphones. But with a column array, you are shooting that sound into the microphones. Even though everybody's behind the speakers, it's just as loud behind the speaker as it is in front of it. And you can see by the horizontal beam width chart. And, you know, this is, this is what I'm talking about in my videos when I say it's just as loud behind as it is in front. And I mean, I'm getting older. I'm 37. You know, I'm sure I've lost some hearing. You know, I've been, I've been doing this for 20 years now, over 20 years. And, uh, you know, I, I try to protect my hearing. I don't like it to be insanely loud on stage. I would like it to be half volume, maybe a quarter volume on stage. I want everybody out there, out front, to be, to be dancing, having a good time, and have it be really loud. I want it to be fairly quiet on stage. You know, if I'm DJing, I want somebody to be able to come up, ask for a request without having to yell it into my ears. If I'm doing live sound, I don't want to constantly be fighting stage bleed feedback through microphones. You know, I want to have a good, a good speaker system that projects, not blows up the audio in every direction. And, but for some people now, now here's, here's the flip side of it. You know, that, that's what I want. I want a quiet stage. You know, everybody talks about cardioid subs, keeping, keeping the low end off the stage. Why, why does nobody talk about directivity of, of higher end frequencies? Um, but not, not to say some people wouldn't want more stage bleed. You know, if I'm doing an acoustic show, I actually sold my RCFs to an acoustic duo. And, you know, maybe they won't be trying to fill a full bar with sound where they're really trying to push the audio out there to where they're fighting feedback the whole time. But I, I know a lot of acoustic people like the, the column arrays because you don't need to have a floor monitor because it's shooting the sound everywhere. You're hearing what the crowd is hearing. But as a... Uh, as a DJ, as a as a sound tech, you know I put monitors on stage for a reason. I uh, I want the stage to be as quiet as possible, and I want to decide what what sound is going on stage. And flip back to the other one here, um, just once again, so you can see the difference. I mean, you see how much lower it it gets for directivity. I mean, we're talking down to 300 hertz before the audio really starts to go everywhere. You know, up here we're talking 800 to 1,000 hertz. Actually, 1,000 hertz and below pretty much is everywhere. I mean, maybe even up to up to uh, you know 1.2k. I think I was saying 12k before. 1.2k, I'm sure is like right up here somewhere. You know, that's really where it starts to go, and that's that's pretty high in the frequency spectrum. Uh, obviously, this is only comparing two speakers. Not a whole lot of manufacturers put out this data. Um, RCF only does it for the Evox 12, so I think you really have to kind of hit the higher end price point before manufacturers start to do these tests. Um, you know, in some of my other videos, you'll hear I've said, like, I've really been liking the Yamaha stuff I've been buying. Uh, Yamaha only publishes this data on their, on their full range speakers, like their new DZR speakers. They only publish this data down to, like, I think, like, 2K they don't have data below 2K. And that's what I care about. Like, obviously, 2K and above, yeah, that's going to be pretty directional. Awesome in your specs, Yamaha. Uh, but that's, like, where your crossover point is. So what's it like below 2K? Is that everywhere? You know, so, you know, you'll hear me talk positive things about Yamaha. I've been liking what I've been seeing with the Yamaha stuff, but I'm not afraid to throw out negative things. I mean, Yamaha... Put, put the full specs, do what RCF does, and let's see the full frequency range. Let's see what your speakers do. But uh, anyways, if you have any questions about this, feel free to throw it down in the comments section. I, I really just wanted to take this video to kind of showcase that, you know, I've, I've complained a lot about turbo sound column arrays, a little bit about RCF column arrays, but at the end of the day, it, it, this issue with audio going everywhere isn't specific to turbo sound. It's not specific to RCF. I think it's just how column arrays work. You know, you don't have a horn loaded compression driver. You don't have a very big cabinet that can help direct the audio. You, you've got a skinny little, skinny little speakers and a skinny little column 
And I think it, it's just a recipe for kind of audio shooting everywhere. And I think my issue isn't specifically with turbo sound, although there are things I don't like the five-way crossover. That's not a true array if you, if you cross over as the column goes. But a lot of my issues aren't specific to turbo sound. They're actually specific to column arrays. And this is probably my number one issue outside of, you know, just, I don't like the really high crossover point, but outside between the column and the sub. But this is probably one of my number one issues. It's not specific to any, any uh, column in particular. I mean, this happens to be the Evox 12, but this is how they all work. I think it's just, it's just a product of a column array. And, you know, I say like, I'm going back to point source because this is what I like to see. Now, not all point sources are this good. Like, you really have to look at the different point sources as well, because I'm sure you can find a point source where it starts to go down to about here and then shoots up exactly as well. I just wanted to compare these two because they were fairly similar in price points. I don't want to compare a $2,500 column array to a, you know, $400 JBL Eon. Um, I've actually, I think I've, I thought plastic cabinets were louder behind. That's a big reason why I switched to wood cabinets a while back. And I don't know if it ha if it's plastic versus wood or if it's just design and construction. I'm not quite sure. I'm gonna I'm actually gonna keep digging in to to uh, point source speakers and try to find this data on pretty much any new one I buy. This gets to be the boring stuff about speakers, but. When you, when you find one speaker and you're like, man, why does this sound so good? Why does it seem to work so well in a live environment? And then this speaker sucks. It just seems like I'm fighting feedback all the time. You know, these are the, dat the data points you really need to look at in the technical details of a speaker. I know it probably verges a little bit on the, the geekery end of things, but it's important stuff when you're speaker shopping. And a big thing for me when I got into live sound I like to buy quality microphones. I like to buy quality speakers. I like to spend as little time as possible having to EQ stuff. Now people say, you know, you could go out with any microphones, you could go out with any speakers. If you're a good sound tech, you can EQ it and make it sound like a million dollar sound system. Yeah, I'm sure you can if you want to spend four hours EQing the system and EQing each, each instrument. I like to start with a quality product where right off the bat without anything, it can sound pretty good and with a little EQ it sounds great and uh, that, that's kind of what I'm delving into but anyways any questions throw it down in the comments section until next time have a good day and I swear I will try not to do as many column array videos as I've been doing it seems like I've just been doing column array video column array video column array video so have a good day